Hey y'all, welcome to a so good tutorial. Usually we're live, but today we're doing a tutorial. This is going to be part one of how to do applique the easy way. We're going to be using our Como Marquee 2001, as well as incorporating a craft cutter so that we can cut our fabric out and not have to worry about cutting it by hand. So this is going to be part one. Part two will be over on Crafting with Yolanda's channel, and the link is listed below in the description so that you can get over there very easily. All right, so let's head to our table so we can see all the materials that we will be using today. All right, so let's talk about the materials that we're going to need for this part of the tutorial. We will be using our Cricut Maker 3. However, you can use any craft cutter that will cut fabric for you. I have tried this out with the Caesar Romeo and you can cut fabric with the Caesar Romeo. You will also need some of this heat and bond and this is the ultra hold heat and bond. This one comes in the red pack. Now it does say no sew up here and I think this kind of confuses people a little bit but that just means that you don't have to sew it. You can apply it using an iron and that's exactly what we're going to be applying this with. We're going to be using a heat press. However, if you have an easy press or a handheld press, you can totally just iron your fabric and your heat and bond together this particular material is great for fabric patches denim leather suede and appliques and that's what we will be doing today i have a pair of fabric cutting scissors if you don't usually cut fabric and let's say you're making this project and you're not using um you're not going to embroider but you just want to cut out fabric, then you want to make sure you still have a pair of sewing scissors, scissors meant and dedicated for fabric. You don't want to mix your paper cutting scissors with your fabric cutting scissors. I have this piece of fabric and I believe I got this fabric from Walmart. However, you can get fabric from Joann's or any place that sells fabric. I will also be using this fabric grip cutting mat and this particular mat works good for me. However, you can use the standard grip mat or if you want to use a strong grip mat, whichever works best for you to prevent your material from shifting. However, I'm using the fabric grip mat. Okay, y'all. So now we're inside of Chroma. This is the digitizing software for Wacoma. The version of Chroma that I will be using today is Chroma Lux. I've already digitized the design. I just want to show you all how we're going to create the portion for the applique that we need so that we can create an SVG file to upload it into Cricut and cut it with our machine. Okay, because you cannot cut a digitized file with your Cricut. So we need to create an SVG, a smooth SVG. So the portion of the design that we want to create the SVG for is the word kind. So I'm going to go ahead and select kind and we are just simply going to right click and I'm going to click copy and I'm gonna right click again and click paste. So now we have two layers of the word kind. I know you can't see it here, but if I move it, you can see it, okay? So I don't need that to be stitch remember we're going to be cutting this with our machine so i'm just going to right click and i'm going to select convert to artwork so you can convert to several different things but we're going to convert this to artwork so now that it's converted to artwork i just want to change the color and so i am just going to right click onto green let's make that green and if you notice over here in our artwork panel the type it says outline we want to expand that and I am going to select so and then click apply okay and so now that is our artwork that is what we will be using to cut with our Cricut and I like doing it this way because you will get a perfect fit for your words if you notice you still see the outline of the satin stitch so that means that this is going to cover it completely we're not going to have any fabric sticking out so I'm just gonna select the word kind and we have the the artwork selected if you look over in that panel 
I'm going to select file and then I'm going to click export artwork. Now before we do that, let's head over into our transform panel and it will tell us exactly the size that this is. So I have, and this is not the entire design, this is only the word kind that we're going to be cutting with our machine. So here we have the width as 10.65 and the height as 4.25. That is very important when you're cutting your your design out or cutting your, if you're using fabric, if you're using HCV, it's very important that you know the size because that's the size that it needs to be in order for it to fit into the applique. So now I'm just gonna head down to export artwork and it's already set at the file type of scalable vector graphics and we have be kind this is the original name of the file but i want to change this to this so i usually like to put the size of the design and what it should be inside of the file name just in case i forget so i'm changing that to 10.65 in width by 4.25 height and I'm just going to say, I'm going to change Be Kind Applique to Artwork so that I will remember that this is the artwork for the applique. All right, so I'm going to select Save. We have it in Documents. I'm going to select Save. And now we have that saved. Okay, so now we can head over into Cricut. All right guys, so now that we have our artwork saved from Chroma as an SVG, we're going to upload it into Cricut Design Space. So I'm just gonna head over to the left, select Upload. We're going to click Upload Image, Browse, and we will be able to pull that file that we just created into Cricut Design Space. Now we're gonna select Continue and I'm going to select upload because it's that's exactly what we want it to be. So let's verify the size. If you remember the size should be 10.65 by 2 point, by 4.25. So always verify your dimensions prior to cutting because you want to make sure you don't want to waste any of your fabric by cutting it too small or too large. Make sure to verify your your dimensions all right and so these are perfect I'm gonna go ahead and select make we will be using the Cricut Maker 3 I'm gonna select make I'm not gonna save it we will be using the mat remember we're using that fabric mat and I'm gonna select confirm okay and then we're going to click continue because everything is exactly as we need it we will not be mirroring it uh, we're going to place the fabric and the heat and bond directly onto the mat. And I'm going to select continue. All right, let's go ahead and select our machine. And this is the machine that we will be using today. The material that we will be using will be the bonded cotton. So I'm gonna go over and select browse all materials and let's just type in cotton and we're going to be using the bonded cotton fabric or cotton bonded and let's select done all right so generally you will mirror it and the bonded side will be up i'm not doing it that way okay but if you prefer to do it that way then you would you know you would do it the way that feels more comfortable for you we will also be using a fine point blade today. You can use the rotary if you select edit tools, you will have the option to use the rotary blade. However, I'm going to be using the fine point blade with this. Okay, and we can get ready to head over to the machine. All right guys, so I'm going to cut our fabric and you want to try to cut it down to the size that you need. You don't really want to waste any fabric. Mine is going to be a little bit larger because I plan on making two shirts with this. I'm going to give one away. But I just cut on the crease line, okay? So here we have our fabric. And you always want to make sure that you cut it 
in the correct direction because if we cut cut like this and let's say this is the size that I need guess what happens when I get ready to place this onto the cutting mat it's going to be in the wrong direction because I want it to be upright on our shirt I don't want it to be going to the side like that I don't want the pineapples going horizontally. I want them to be in the upright position, right? So always make sure you pay attention to how you cut it and the direction that it is going in. This is very important also for when you're using fabric that has words on it. All right, guys, here are our pieces. I am going to only use one for now. So let's get ready and take our heat and bond out. And this is a roll of heat and bond. One side of the heat and bond is pretty rough. That it's actually the adhesive there. The other side, when you first unpackage it, it's paper. So that's just to protect the other side. When you're getting ready to apply the heat and bond, you want to make sure that you place your fabric on the rough side. Okay? You want it to be on the rough side, not on the paper side. Okay? And we're going to leave the paper on until we get ready to to cut and i'm just going to use the the material just to give me an idea of how i need to cut the the heat and bond i don't really want to waste any of my heat and bond i am using a regular pair of scissors to do this it might be tempting to just go ahead and use those fabric scissors, but trust me, you don't want to do that. So this is how this is going to go. Okay, so remember, it's the rough side. And if you scratch it, you'll hear that. That's the smooth side. So we're just going to place it like this. When we get ready to head to our heat press and actually apply this, we're going to press it face down like this. Okay, we want the heat to make contact with the back of the heat and bond. Okay, so it's going to go like that. All right, guys, now we're at the heat press and we just need to protect our heat press. So I'm using parchment paper for the bottom and the top of the heat press. Remember, that rough side is adhesive and you don't want that to stick to your bottom plate. So you want to make sure that you're protecting your heat press, okay? So if you notice, this is slightly larger than the, the fabric. And so I want to make sure that none of that adhesive gets on the bottom of my press. All right, so here we have our fabric with the heat and bond on it. I'm just going to place it face down just like this. It's gonna go face down just like that. I'm also gonna put another piece of parchment paper on top. And we're using parchment paper because the adhesive won't really stick to the parchment paper. It'll, it's an easier takeoff. That's why we use parchment paper and not butcher paper for projects like this. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply pressure and heat. And, and we press this for 8 seconds at 280 degrees. So that's what we have. Again, that was 280 degrees Fahrenheit for eight seconds. And I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna let this cool off. I'm not peeling the backing away just yet. I am letting this cool off. All right guys, so we're getting ready to cut and I am going to peel the fabric away from the heat and bond. And you guys will see how that is going to look. Now there, you can place the heat and bond with the backing on the cutting mat, but I'm taking the backing off. And if you guys look and see, now it's a little more shiny on this side. That's because there's, this is like double-sided tape. So it's double-sided adhesive. So now I'm just removing the backing. All right. And I'm just going to trim some of 
this extra heat and bond away. All right, guys, so now we're gonna place our material, our bonded material on back. I'm gonna get my brayer and I'm just going to get this down here. And now we're ready to place this into our machine and I'm going to load it. Okay, so now we're ready to begin cutting. So I'm just monitoring the cut just to make sure nothing shifts and everything cuts correctly. This took about 30 seconds to cut this design out, which is not a lot of time at all. Cutting fabric is pretty noisy, so don't be alarmed if you hear that blade just slicing your fabric. All right, so we're ready to load it, and that was super, super quick. And so now what we're going to do is take the fabric and just remove it off of the cutting mat. This cut out really good, but just know that sometimes you may have to cut a little bit of the fabric just to make sure that it's perforated. Now, if you have like smaller projects that you're going to be doing, you may want to save this because it already has the heat and bond on the back of it. And you can still use this depending on what you're going to be using it for. And then we also have that center part of the D. So let's go ahead and remove our applique letters off. So here we have our D. We have the N. We have our I. And the K. And now this is ready for us to use with our design. It's all ready for us to use with our design. Now, if you don't have embroidery, you can totally still place this onto a shirt or whatever you have and just use heat and bond and it will stick. Or just use your heat press and it will stick onto your shirt. Okay. All right, y'all. So we are all done with part one of easy applique how to use your Cricut cutter or any cutter that you have with your Coma Marquis 2000 one and these are our letters that we cut out so now you guys are about to head over to the jenna i have a link listed below to crafting with delanda's channel and to the video that is part two of this so she is going to finish it up and i know that what she makes is going to be beautiful so thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this so good tutorial. And until next time, y'all.